I have a seminar called Demons Versus Prayer. And I started doing this seminar all over. It's six hours. It takes Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But by the second lesson, we got visitors bringing visitors. You know, nobody's talking about this stuff. So you can't get members to bring visitors. What are you talking about? Visitors bringing visitors? But that's what happens everywhere we go. I'm about to do one uh, next week uh, near near Waco, Valley Mills. But anyway, uh, so I had this seminar and I was doing it all over. And we finally said... My wife won't let me go out of the country anymore. I'm diabetic for 45 years. We've got grandkids, and but my supplies got lost or messed up. I could have a problem. So she says, you can do videos and you can do Zoom. So I said, okay, I need to pay somebody to do video this six-hour seminar. And I got a friend in Tyler who let us use his car barn thing to uh, yeah. cross on one wall. And, and I said, well, I do better talking to people than just to a camera. So let's just invite 50 people and let them be there, and I'll give these six lessons. It was going to be cheaper to do it in three nights, so we can do two each night. They're yeah. at a little over an hour each one. So, uh, you know, I'd change shirts, <laughs> you know, and we'd everybody change seats, you know. Yeah. It was cheaper to get. I'm tightwad, you know. So, But it was still going to cost about $3,000. This was several years ago to video these, these six lessons in three nights. Well, I put it on Facebook. Hey, if you want to come to be in the audience, we're going to video these lessons. We talk about things that hinder our prayers and spiritual weapons and, and the, all these categories that have to do with spiritual warfare. And I get a phone call from Hollywood. And this guy goes, you don't know me, but my name is B.J. Davis. I was a stuntman in Hollywood before I became a, a producer and a director. And, and I've been there 40 years. And I, I've been watching your YouTube channel. And I think what you're doing is really important. So I'd like to volunteer to come in. You're going to do this video. I'd like to fly in and direct this video. Just no charge. Cool. And I said, well, actually, free is in my price range. So, you know, come on out. <laughs> but when he got here, he saw he was going to have two cameras and this and this. And he said, no, I need more lighting. I need a third camera. We need, you know, all this. Well, that's more editing. And then all of a sudden, $3,000 expense became 6000 And I was kind of taking a deep gulp over this. And then I said, well, I just need to relax. God sent this guy. You know, sure. he knows what he's doing. I need to do what he says. So we did the three uh, uh, nights with six lessons, no problems at all. Didn't even have to do retakes. I mean, it was amazing how smooth everything went. And when it was over, this guy came up and he said, I don't know what all this cost, but I'll pay for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Well, thank you. So this other the guy comes up. Lord works. Only yeah. God. Yeah, oh, yeah. The other guy comes up and he says, uh, I got you an appointment next week with my lawyer. I said, what for? He said, people are going to want to help what you're doing. We're going to make you a nonprofit. Yeah. Oh, God. okay. I didn't ask for that either. Yeah. And it sort of exploded <clears throat> after yeah. that. And that video series, Demons vs. Prayer 1-6, through six, is now available free on our store at active-faith.org. When you go to the shop at the top, it's got a banner, Demons vs. Prayer, free download. It's a Vimeo channel we have, and you can just click and watch all six hours from anywhere in the world. You don't need me, and you don't need my steaks. I just have the coolest steaks of anybody's steaks. Yeah. But it's not the steak. It's the act of faith, and it's it the is. power of the Word of God. Yeah. Anybody who can't afford them, I try to give them free. If they show up in my seminar and they want steaks and they can't buy them, yeah. no problem. It's yours. It's never been about money. I made a lot more money when I was in business, I so it wasn't, it wasn't that. But another interesting thing that helped me understand more about weapons. I'm going to share this story with you and then we'll, yes. we'll cut off anytime you want to. No. But yeah. a lady from the Tyler area attended those six, those, those filming sessions. Mm -hmm. And about two weeks later, she called me and I had met her briefly at the last night we were there. And she said, my name is such and such. Do you remember me? And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, you have three boys, all have college degree and good jobs, but your middle son is depressed severely depressed. She said, that's right. She said, in fact, I didn't tell you this, but, but when I heard your lessons, we were at the point where he, he was not even returning my uh, text messages anymore. And I was expecting a phone call saying he killed himself. He was so close to suicide. Wow. And she said, when I heard your, your stories about these stakes with verses on them, I bought four and I took them home that night. But you need to know this. I was already praying and fasting. And at the end of every fast, mm -hmm. I was taking the Lord's Supper by myself, just yeah. as a punctuation point on God, yeah, please yeah. help my son. He's depressed mm -hmm. and there's no reason for it. The yeah. spirit of depression has overcome him. Help me get rid of it, Lord. Yeah. And so uh, she said, when I, when I bought your steaks and I took them home that last night, I laid them on the table and I looked at them and I prayed, Lord, show me how to add this 
to what I'm already doing. That's I call that combining weapons. Yeah. You're adding, you're pulling more arrows out of your quiver. You got an axe and a, you know, you got a sword and you got a spear and you know all this. <clears throat> she said, "How do I add this to what I'm already doing?" And she said, "It clicked, and I knew what to do." She said, "I went and got the cup that I had been taking the Lord's supper with, and I set the cup on the table, and I put the stakes in the cup, and I put His picture in that cup, mm. and I got on my knees and I fasted and prayed the rest of that day and late into the night." And the next morning, my son called me and he said, Mom, I don't know what you did last night, but it worked. The spirit of depression is gone. It's like I woke up in a whole new world today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. She said, you're right. God's word is powerful. Now, Steve, are you saying take communion in a certain cup, put steaks in it, put a, put a picture in it, and then fast on your knees? It's not a formula. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying she took my ideas and she asked God how to adapt them to her unique situation mm -hmm. and God led her to a place to do that. God may lead you to write other certain things on this sure. state. No more bad decisions. No more gluttony. No more uh, uh, fear. We have fear. It's a plague of fear. Yes. COVID was a plague of fear. Mm -hmm. It's more about fear than anything else. Yeah. Fear is the reason Satan does that. It's because fear and faith cannot coexist. Yeah. Fear pushes out faith or your faith pushes out your fear. Yeah. Whatever you focus on, it displaces the other. It'd be like saying, turn that light bulb halfway on. You can't do it. The light bulb is either on or off. There's no in between on the light bulb. That's how faith and fear. If you allow yourself to focus on your fears, then your faith evaporates. Yes. But if you train yourself as a Christian to focus on your faith, then your fears are what evaporate. That's why Satan uses fear. And that's why this plague of fear through every means possible. Fear through media, bad media coverage, fear through vaccines, fear through diseases. God's in control. You're going to live till God says so anyway. Yes. I'm not saying do stupid stuff right. and you got to make your own yes. decisions. I'm not trying to get you to make your own decision, but don't let fear rule your decisions. Let God lead you. It's so decisive. You know, first Timothy, God, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And so when you but hear Christian, when you hear Christians say that, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just so fearful. Uh, I'm, my son's going astray. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just worried. I'm scared, you know, yeah. And, but it is. It's followed. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and the psychiatric, a sound mind. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. And that mind. fear is worry. And I, I call. I say it this way: worry is faith in Satan. Yeah. Because if you're worrying, you're focused on what Satan wants you to be thinking might happen bad. Mm -hmm. But if, but it, instead of focusing on what God says will happen, He'll see you through. He'll be with you through this problem. So yes. worry is faith in Satan. We yes. got to quit that. Yeah, I got to quit. When I used to wake up at three in the morning and worry, I started to realize, first of all, Satan does his best work in the dark. You know, at night, things, your problems get bigger. And if I worry about them, they don't go away. Yeah. They get bigger and, and worse. And, and I'm, I'm more upset when I wake up in the morning. So I started, I said, how can I stop that? And I said, I think I know. And it worked. I'm going to share it with you right now. It's easy. It's simple. But I'd wake up at three and start to worry. And I'd say, nope. I'm not going to do that. I say, Lord, who do you want me to pray for? And some name would pop in my head that had cancer or just lost a loved one. I start praying for that person and I go right back to sleep. And you know what started happening? Satan quit waking me up at three in the morning because I joined the battle against him. Yeah. Now I sleep like a baby. I don't mean I wake up crying every hour. I mean, I, I sleep good all night long. <laughs> I'd worry about you if you did that. <laughs> but it is. It's so powerful because I think everybody wakes up during the night sometimes at different times and and that's what I find myself doing that too. I think, no, I'm not going to go down this track. Ask God who to pray what for. is the spirit of God? What is the word of God? What is the word to speak right now over this situation that, you know, all of a sudden, Amen. you know, the enemy's trying to cause me to be afraid of, you know, what, what do I going to do tomorrow? I, I've right. got, I've got this big project tomorrow. I'm having anxiety. I'm having fear. And I, I just say, God, you know, give me the peace that passes all understanding. My life is in your hands. This, pro this project is going to go however you want it to go, Lord. I commit it to you. That's right. You know, just take it, bless it, and uh, anoint it. One of the things I'm learning to do, of course, obviously, people that are more active for the kingdom are going to be have more attacks from the enemy. Yeah, That's sure. obvious. So one of the things I'm learning to do, I think it's I think it's a good thing for all Christians to do, is when I go to bed every night, part of my prayer is, Lord, I cancel any plans the enemy has against me tonight. In Jesus' name. Yeah. 
I just cancel him. If he's going to wake me up with some problem or if he's going to uh, bring fear into my heart or if he's going to try to give me a nightmare, I just cancel any plans the enemy has against me tonight in Jesus' name. And when I wake up in the morning each day before my feet hit the floor, I say, Lord, it's a new day and thank you for my heart still beating, so I must have something to do for the kingdom. Show me what to do. And also cancel any plans the enemy has against me today. Yes. When I lay down and when I get up, the first things I do is cancel the, the enemy's plans against me in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And and it's amazing. Uh, it helps yeah, things I've, go better. I've heard of uh, mothers when their sons are going off into military service yes. or they're going off. They'll get that scripture from, I believe it's Isaiah 54. Yep. No weapon. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Right. And mama tell them, keep this with you That's wherever right. you go. And that one in amazing. Psalm 91. Both of those yeah. are very good for, for our warriors. Yes. Yep. And it's amazing, you know, uh, stories that where many people were unfortunately killed in his group, but yet God preserved him yeah. and yeah. throughout the battle, and he would end up coming home. Yeah. And uh, just a strong testimony, again, of the power of the Word of God. Amen. You know, we've relegated the Scriptures so much to it's the book of the past, or as you say, the God I, that used to could, not mm -hmm. the God that I am, you know, today. And uh, to me, that's one of the most disheartening things is, wow, you know, if God can't help us today, if he can't help us today, you know, it's, it's more, it's self-help, Christian right. self-help. That's right. You know, my Bible, work. my Bible, no, it won't work at all. <laughs> my Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. And just because you have people out there who are theological and believe in cessationist is a theological yeah. term, you yeah. know. Now, you know, Steve, you just better tough it out. God's on the throne. He's not paying attention. He's up there patting his foot, just going, mm -hmm. you know, wonder what's going on down there, you know. He's not intervening in the lives of men. I find that to be... Uh, unscriptural. That, it's just so unscriptural. unscriptural. <laughs>